If we turn the clock back 13 years ago, there was a campaign which used the icon, which was uh, the bird that was in the advertising, but it was a very traditional campaign, and it was placing the famous grouse right in the heart of traditional whisky advertising and communications. And at the time, the famous grouse really needed something to um, differentiate it, to build its personality. So a really deliberate part of our strategy and our creative development when we pitched for the business was to do what we called famously, was to break out of the whisky cage. So we said goodbye to all the traditional cues of whisky advertising, we stripped them right away and we placed the icon in the famous white world with a pure white background. What I think its limitation was is that necessarily print advertising, whether it be posters or press ads, are two-dimensional. So what one couldn't do was explore the personality of the bird as much as you could do on television. There's a certain amount of cl complicity between the grouse and um, the audience. As happens with the grouse sometimes, we just have a great idea. And if you have a great idea, because you're always thinking about different ideas and ways to evolve the brand, if a good idea comes along, then you can create the adverts from that. There's always that moment where you sit here and you've got a blank sheet of paper and you think, what am I going to do for the grouse? What tends to happen is you look at all the previous adverts and you think, how am I going to come up with something as good as that? And it takes days, it takes hours, or it can take seconds. You look back over the history of grouse advertising, and, and I think over the years I've come to sort of have a very strong feeling about what is and is not the grouse, the famous grouse. And the golden rule, actually, in a way, is, is he can only ever do what you believe he could do. It's not quite the same as pure ornithological realism. As soon as somebody wants the grouse to do something questionable, that great, at that point, you know, I tend to feel, no, that's wrong. Very often the grouse does something, you know, imagine you know, the, the film we call Pedestal, the one with the limousine, you know, and he's balancing on the end there. Um, and you would never actually <laughs> achieve that in real life. But there's nothing in the pose that you question. There is no speaking in the ads. The famous grouse doesn't talk. There is no beak sync. Lip sync, which is where you have to match somebody's mouth and their movements to a language, is the bane of every international campaign. And the beauty of the famous grouse is all his communication is in how he moves. It's his body language rather than his lip language, if you like. <laughs> 